So the cats made it back to Marquette late Sunday night with some flashy hardware. Now, before the GLIAC tournament had even started, this was already the best season in the history of the program since the turn of the century. And then you went out and won the GLIAC tournament. So what does getting that validation and getting that, uh, those accolades, those team accolades, mean to, to you, to your squad, and to this program as a whole? Yeah, I think two things. One, I, it's, this is tough to even say out loud, but like I had, you always think about what a championship actually feels like and means, and um, you see other people do it, and you just kind of wonder what it would feel like and what is that moment like, and uh, it was um, better. And I, like it was awesome. Like I can't think of anything that could feel more validating or cooler. And it helps obviously that I love this team so much because it was more cool to see how happy they all were than it was anything else. Um, and all the work that they've put in and we've recruited these kids for so long and we've thought about, you know, man, if we have these guys, we're gonna be good. And it felt like like the years of thinking and working and all of that just ended in this total joy. And the second part of that is I, I didn't know how awesome it would be doing it, but what I did know is I was gonna feel an extreme amount of guilt and frustration if this season ended with us not winning the conference and losing by one game with all the games that were close. Um, and, and really the closest in the sense of we lost close and we won big. So I would have felt awful about that. And then if we more importantly got left out of the NCAA tournament, I would have felt awful. And so when we won the first two rounds of the conference tournament and it looked like we probably clinched our spot in the national tournament, I felt a lot better because at least we'd have something to show for it and be able to hang a banner and keep playing. But then winning the championship, that was a whole nother level that maybe I didn't necessarily anticipate. So um, to say it was, was fun and awesome and cool and all that kind of stuff would be an understatement. And um, I think, you know, going into the tournament, there's, I, I, I don't know how to handle it. Right, I've never done it before, and it, and and none of our guys have done it before. Um, I, I all year we talked about being honest and not lying and not making stuff up. We are going to be very happy and appreciative about the fact we get a chance to be there and compete. That doesn't mean we don't want to win, but we're not going to fake and play this macho tough guy thing either. We're we're happy. Well, coach, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was you who, when we were talking here earlier in the season. You were a vocal uh, opponent or a vocal decrier of the old defense wins championships adage. Well, you could make the case that the Cats won this one with their defense. I mean, against Saginaw Valley, you held them without a field goal for the last six minutes. They went 0 for 12. Against Ferris, you held them the 4 of 23 in the, in the second, 25% field goal shooting for the game. Against Michigan Tech, you held them without a point for four of the last five minutes of that game to seal the game. So. You did say also during the year that you felt like if this team could just defend better, then they'd be in a really good spot. Well, what can you say about where your defense is at now? Yeah, I guess I was wrong because we did win it with our defense. The whole, the whole stretch, the whole stretch run of this season, you know, once we lost Brian, we stopped having that, like, magical, possibly one of the best offenses in the country. I really thought we were a top five offense um, before Brian went down. Without Brian, we knew we weren't going to be a top five offense. So we had to become an elite defense. And I think we we're the best defensive team in the league down the stretch, not just the tournament, but the whole end of the year. Um, I thought we were, we were tough and nasty on defense. It helps what a good rebounding team we are, and it helps what a good um, turnover team we are. So that makes the defense a little bit easier. But, yeah, we won because of defense. I mean, that's why we won. And it is ironic that after I said that defense doesn't win championships, we literally won a championship because of our defense. So um, I hope I'm wrong like that more often. Well, another piece of uh, irony that I couldn't help but think about was after the first time that we had played Michigan Tech, you had commented, you know, yeah, you know, maybe their, their record's not so great this season, but they're a really young team. They've got all the pieces, and this is probably just a blip on the radar in terms of the overall arc mm -hmm. of their program. You had also said that nobody is going to want to see this team in the tournament, and sure enough, they made it all the way to the championship game. So to go through them under those circumstances, and obviously with the rivalry being there, and to also go through Ferris along the way, 
a team, you know, and get kind of payback for what happened there uh, a couple of months ago when we met him in the regular season. Does that at all make this win any sweeter if it's even possible for it to be sweeter than it already is? For sure, and I think that's part of maybe the joy we experienced afterwards is, first of all, the tech thing. I, uh, I think that a lot of what I said about tech um, to you guys, but also to our team, I don't think they believed the first time we played them when we won by 25. I think our team's like, coach, like they're they're just not that good right now. They're they're too young, whatever. The second time we played them, I think they believed it a little after the game. But then when they go into the tournament and knock off Parkside and knock off Grand Valley, I think the third time we played them, our guys fully realized how how good they were and. I think we knew they'd get good eventually. Um, they just got there a little bit quicker than um, maybe even we anticipated or they anticipated making the championship at least. But those kids are studs. And um, honestly, I know their kids so well and I know their coaches so well. And um, as a Northern coach, I shouldn't think this, but I was proud of them for what they did. I thought what they did was awesome um, as a program this year, going from struggling that much early to being able to flip the season. and. Um, I think that says everything you need to know about Michigan Tech as a basketball program. Um, and then the journey for us, um, the only thing I can compare it to is, is you know, when Virginia as a one seed lost to the 16 and then the next year they won it. And Tony Bennett had, I can't even remember what the quote was, but something along the lines of, you know, sometimes the best things in life come from the worst things. And our conference championship game last year was as bad as any conference championship game you could ever play. I mean, we, we lost, we, we played the eight seed, similar to this year, and uh, lost by 30 plus or whatever it was, and really just didn't show up. At Ferris was the lowest point of, and this says a lot about what a, what a easy, blessed life I've lived, that was the lowest point of my life. Not even basketball, life. Um, I thought we had some stuff happen to us, um, that was unfair and, and wrong. I thought our team choked a little, and I thought I, as a coach, completely screwed up the end of the game, and I knew that would cost us the regular season title, and I knew it would cost us the at-large bid that was gonna be easy. So, to go back to that same place that we had experienced this devastating low and experience the highest of highs um, just you know a couple couple weeks later uh, that was honestly made it ten times better I mean it was surreal and uh, I, I think if it wasn't for that low moment maybe that high moment wouldn't have been so high because we felt so bad on that bus afterwards and um, the other kind of funny one is I, I remember I got some Qdoba um, to, to have on the bus after the game at Ferris. And I opened the Qdoba and, and got on the bus. I'm like, well, at least I have this. And I shoveled a scoop in my mouth and it had ants in it. Ants had gotten in, so I ate a couple ants. And uh, at that point, I mean, it was like, what, well, like what, what, what more can happen? So um, <laughs> this was the polar opposite of that. Same, same bus, get in there, uh, set the trophy and the net down. And I'm like, this is the opposite of ants in my Qdoba, so um, no, it was awesome. So with that being said, obviously the Cats kind of on clock nine, as they should be winning a conference title. How do you transition then from that to saying, okay, but we gotta get back to work because now there's bigger things ahead? I think the Hillsdale matchup helps with that part. Yeah. Um, the fact that they had you know, beaten us so badly early in the year. and We were leading the game for 17 minutes and ran out of gas. And I think you know, we've wanted to, I, I'm curious as much as anything, like as a, as a coach, I'm not, but as a fan of this team, which is part of me coaching them, I, I wanna know, was that a blip or is that real? And we'll find that out as we get a second chance at them. And obviously that was, we were so tired and all the other excuses that go into that game, none of that matters right now. What matters is, um, can we play better than we did against them the last time? And it helps that I think they beat us because we know how good they are. Um, and then, you know, I, I don't know. I, my, my th I think coaches as a whole, and I do it myself and I'm trying to get better at it, we all like make stuff up and overthink and, and do things that cause our team and our kids to not play well because we are 
making up things, and we're not going to do that. Um, we haven't done that all year. We try to just call it what it is, and, and we are happy, and we're not going to act like we have some made up uh, anger right now. Um, we we want to beat Hillsdale. We're happy to be in the tournament. We're happy to keep playing, um, and we're going to take it one game at a time because at this point, I don't think we'd even know how to do more than that. I, I, I think the last month, We've been so one game at a time because every game's been so important. I don't even know if we would know how to think about like the moment or any of that because we've just had to be so locked in on each game. So I think we'll be ready. Um, and uh, I know we'll have a good week of practice and, and all that kind of stuff, but um, we're also going to enjoy it. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm looking at a graphic here. Um, sorry if I, I can never say his name right. Max Bjorklund yep, was, named the, uh, was named the tournament MVP for the Gleak tournament. Um, I'm a student at Northern, I've been here for three years, and since I've been here, Max Brooklyn has kind of been the face of the basketball program. I feel like when I think enemy basketball, I think him. As his, you know, heading into his senior year, he's on his way out of Northern. Can you talk to what he's meant to the program and to what that kind of meant for you as a coach who's kind of watched him grow as a player to be named the MVP of the tournament? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's awesome. Um, I think the hard part for Max going into this year was he done his four years of college and this is his fifth year and um, if you look around the landscape of college basketball those fifth years have not gone great for a lot of guys I, I don't know if it's you know being burnt out or what it is um, so you know he decided to come back here which is the first thing um, not many all-conference players have came back to their division two schools for their fifth year so he he did that um, which was was kind of the first incredible thing he did as far as changing our program goes and then he had all the expectations in the world on him this year preseason player of the year um, you know like you said face of our program everybody knew he was the guy every scout starts with him and he just all year delivered and lived up to every expectation and there's a lot of you know the underdog story is cool but 99 percent of the time the the guy that's supposed to be the best ends up not being um because the pressure and the expectations and whatever else and for him to just take all that and be able to block it out and just focus on being the best player in the league and you know he didn't win player of the year but it was him and another guy were close and the other guy deserved it too but you know now he wins the tournament mvp so i think he'd take that one all day so um but to do all that with the expectations to me is the most kind of incredible thing about him and maybe that's part of why heading into this i'm not worried about us being excited to be there and us being happy and all of that because you know he's going to be the same person that he is every single day um, for that game and when your best player is going to be the same person it gives your team a pretty good chance yeah so um we looked at max the veteran on the team i'd say it's clear to say right before his press conference you had said um you'd mentioned over there you know we played hills there before our freshmen were before when they were still freshmen can you talk a little bit about some of the freshmen on this team i know they've been making a lot of big impacts this season yeah so dylan first team all conference is a freshman um i can't remember that being done i'm sure it's been done i can't remember any of the leagues i've been in seeing a freshman on the first team um but it's just absolutely incredible um and uh you know, he's, to me, the most talented player in our league, and, and he's, you're just going to see more and more and more growth out of him. Um, and then he didn't win Freshman of the Year because Max Wisebrode won Freshman of the Year over him, and we actually nominated both guys for all conference, both guys for Freshman of the Year. One wins Freshman of the Year, the other one's first team, and then Max made second team. So in one, that's how close those two were in the eyes of the other coaches in the league. Um, and I think that's accurate. They bring different things to the table. And, you know, Max, um, when Brian went down with his injury, Max just, Brian was probably the best point guard in the league as far as pure point guards go. And uh, when he goes down, Max just stepped up and became the best pure point guard in the league. Um, led the league in assists and, uh, you know, to have that that there um, was obviously a luxury, but he's kind of been our 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 leader on the floor, even though he's a true freshman, um, and that's pretty rare. But his his basketball, it's you know, people talk about basketball IQ. It's it's like in him, like all all he is is basketball. Like he focuses on it, and that's like part of his being. And I don't know if I've been around someone that you know is as obsessive as coaches are 
but he might be more obsessive than most coaches are. He's just, and that's why, you know, Max and, and Brian, who's, who's wired very similar in some ways and different in other ways, that's why those two are probably going to go on to be a lot better college basketball coaches than I will be. And, you know, when we look back on why this team won, I think looking at what those two accomplish in basketball beyond even just their college careers, I think it'll be pretty obvious when you look back on it. And if you look back at some of the great Northern teams, um, yeah, there's great players, but there's also Troy Matson and Tom Izzo and guys who are on those great teams that have gone on to be you know, pretty big time basketball people throughout the course of time. <clears throat> yeah, so I want to touch on something that Max had talked about a lot earlier about, you know, winning the GLIAC championship. And I think here at Northern States, say the basketball culture hasn't been great historically. We, there hasn't been a ton of fan support. Next season, you guys are moving into a new arena. Hopefully that will build. But I did notice that on your way back into um, Marquette here, you guys got a police escort as well as Dr. Tessman, the president of the university, waiting for you when I off the bus. Can you tell me a little about what the support meant when you got back here to campus? Yeah, it's incredible. So, first of all, I think the, the basketball program, you know, was, was – really rolling for a long time in the in the 80s and 90s in particular and um, it obviously the 23 years thing it's been down um, and it's been at times really bad and it's I think gotten kind of consistently better the last six seven years um, and obviously kind of capped off that growth with this and hopefully there's another couple steps to take um, but we're you know we tied the all-time record for wins in the history of the school if we get another one, we'll set the all-time record, and it's another goal this week to, to try to do that. Um, but what I've been so proud of um, is how many people are coming back um, and back into the basketball program. Um, a lot of people from that 80s and 90s era were pretty disappointed how much it slipped, and those people are back and the number of calls and texts from alumni I'm getting is so awesome. And then, you know, as far as I thought the students on Wednesday night, we would have lost that game. Um, and none of this would have happened. It would have been done. Um, but the crowd was the best I've ever seen. It was loud. They were into it. They cared. Um, and it gave our guys one of those special moments in life that you don't get many cracks at. And um, I thought Wednesday might have been my highlight of the whole week. Um, just just watching our guys interact with, with the other athletes after the game, it was just surreal and so cool. And then, you know, we're driving up, the police escort, I didn't know about it. So I'm like, well, are we getting pulled over? I'm like, what's going on? And so I was, I mean, it was awesome. And then, you know, to see President Tessman there, I mean, he, he was a big part of why um, we had so many students at the game on Wednesday. He went to our road game at Michigan Tech, which again is just, it's, it's incredible. So the amount of support we've gotten um, from all of the administration, but you know, specifically him as a new president, I've never th seen anything like it. And um, you know, if he attacks everything he's doing in the way he's, he's been with us, I think Northern Michigan as a school is is going to be doing some incredible things that um, I'm excited to see because that's that you know you just every now and then you meet someone and you just are like this person's special and uh, President Tessman's that kind of person.